everyone welcome to uh, optometry teacher this session is about retinoscope which is uh, one of the first in the series of um, uh, refraction and that would include uh, objective refraction and subjective refraction methods so in this part we'll be talking about retinoscopes these are the objectives for us uh, the types of uh, retinoscope to describe them and also the compare the features of uh, spore and streak retinoscope which are the two basic types of retinoscopes around us and what are the parts and the basic optics of retinoscope so this this presentation basically is aiming to give you a broad uh, idea about the retinoscopes and just a disclaimer all the images used in this presentations are taken from Google images none are being photographed from my side so just quickly look at what is objective refraction and retinoscopy is a method of objective refraction right so it's a method to objectively measure the refractive status of the eye so if you look at the eye whether any refractive error is there or not and if there is any refractive error how much is a refractive error okay and that is measured objectively so we do not really need the response from the patient side that is why this technique is known as objective technique there are a couple of other methods of objective refraction that is autorefractometry and keratometry now those would also give you um, an idea about the refractive status of the patient's eye now getting into retinoscope it's one of the simplest instruments uh, in eye care uh, it, it basically um, aiming to produce a light and that light is sent into the patient's eye and whatever is gone into the patient's eye will get reflected from the patient's retina and come back and then reach to our eye so that we will be able to see a reflective patch of the retina that we call it as a retinoscopic reflex so uh, for that we basically need a light source a reflecting mirror and a peephole so light source is here and there is a mirror that reflects a light that comes into the mirror and into the patient's eye and from the patient's retina the light reflects back and you as an examiner you'll be looking through the peephole of the instrument or peephole of the retinoscope so that you will be able to see the light reflecting from the patient's retina so based on the type of retinoscope there could be slight differences in it but in principle all the retinoscope should have these three parts uh, we should need a light source and a mirror to reflect the light into the patient's eye and a peephole through which you as an examiner okay, look the retinoscopic light reflex you generally have two types of retinoscopes one is spot retinoscope and another one is streak retinoscope we'll quickly go through both this is a spot retinoscope it is again one of the simplest forms of retinoscopes and as you can see in this image you can see a light source here and a person is holding the retinoscope in his hand and here is a patient so as I told you in the previous uh, slide the retinoscope should have uh, basically three parts a light source so in the case of a sport retinoscope this is the older version of it the light source is outside like a bulb and the light from the light source gets onto the retinoscope that is basically a reflecting mirror okay and the light gets reflected with the help of this mirror into the patient's eye and as you can see here the retinoscope all have a small opening at the center that is called the peephole through which you examine the light getting reflected from the patient's retina so this simply examines uh, explains how a retinoscope works so in a sport retinoscope as I told you it is very simple it has a handle and it has a mirror that is perforated perforated is nothing but it has a small opening in the center 
and in the older versions of uh, spot retinoscope the light source is external as i have explained but the newer versions comes with the inbuilt light source in it and why the name uh, spot retinoscope is nothing but the light that comes out of this uh, retinoscope is in the form of a circle or a spot that is why it is called a spot retinoscope and the size of the peep hole okay this peep hole or the central hole or perforated hole is around four millimeter we cannot make it very small because if you make it very small uh, we, uh, we will not possibly capture the maximum amount of light that comes from the patient's retina sometimes when you refract the eyes that has media opacities so that has early cataracts or if the light is not getting properly reflected or because of the media opacities so sufficient amount of light is not coming in will not be able to capture it so minimum we keep it as around four millimeters and this mirror um, most of the time it will be a plain mirror or a very weak concave mirror that is used in sport retinoscope now coming to streak retinoscope uh, these are um, uh, advanced uh, type of retinoscopes okay just because of the light source that comes out of the retinoscope is in the form of a slit or a streak and that is why we call this retinoscope as streak retinoscope so we'll quickly look in uh, so comparing to the sport retinoscope these are the points that we can uh, try to remember uh, this is compact and it is portable that is the biggest advantage compared to the uh, traditional sport retinoscope because uh, in the traditional sport we have to have an external light source so portability is a problem and the light source as I mentioned it is within the instrument in the case of streak retinoscope and uh, another biggest advantage is we can rotate the streak into 360 degrees so that we can easily locate the astigmatic axis in the case of a streak retinoscope which is slightly difficult when we are using sport retinoscope but with an experienced uh, retinoscopist even the sport retinoscope astigmatic axis location is very simple and um, a third advantage of the streak retinoscope is we have both plane mirror and concave mirror options available in the retinoscope okay probably uh, when we are having another um, lecture on the streak retinoscope in detail how we get the plane mirror and concave mirror options we'll be able to explain that a little bit more better there so, uh, now we'll have a look at the parts of streak retinoscope this i'm taking the example of a killer retinoscope and a hain beta but both are absolutely the same only the minor differences between them so uh, if you want to divide the retinoscope into th three parts i would probably do it this way it has a handle and it has a neck and it has a head so the handle uh, is where the rechargeable battery is located but if it is connected to the direct current then uh, you will be able to um, use it um, can be directly connected to the electric sources but uh, you can also have a rechargeable battery here and it has a rear stat at the neck okay so this rear stat works like uh, a, a portion that we can switch on and off the instrument as well as you can increase the and decrease the brightness of the uh, uh, streak that comes out of the instrument with the help of rear stat now we'll come into the another part in the neck that is the collar or sleeve and you can see here in hand beta it is located here this part is movable we can push it up or push it down so when you uh, depending upon your requirement okay if you want to use a plane mirror retinoscopy you have to keep this neck down and if you want a concave mirror you'll have to just push it up so similarly in the case of hand beta retinoscope also and now when you look at the head part we have basically two portion one is this is called the broadest this is the part you touch at the eyebrow okay just above the eyebrow to stabilize the instrument and you can see this peep hole okay so this is a small hole through which you look in okay and to, to capture the light light trace that is getting reflected from the 
patient's retina. So these are the basic parts of the retinoscope. Now we'll try to look in what is inside in it. Okay, so as I have mentioned before, there are three parts of the retinoscope. That is a light source, a reflecting mirror, and a peephole through which you look at the light getting reflected from the patient's retina. Right, so uh, this is uh, an example of a killer retinoscope, the inside of it. You have a bulb, that is a rotatable retinoscopic bulb. And uh, when you're rotating the uh, collar, okay, to rotate the streak in 360 degrees, you're basically rotating the bulb. And the light rays from the bulb is captured by a condensing lens. And this condensing lens and the position of the bulb is in such a way that the bulb is located at the focal point of this condensing lens so that the light rays that is coming out of this bulb rendered parallel okay once it uh, it is going out of the condensing lens but the position of the bulb with respect to the lens will be different when we are choosing between plane mirror and concave mirror which as i mentioned i'll be explaining it in another video so the light rays captured by the condensing lens are sent onto the reflecting mirror which is a semi reflecting mirror it reflects a light into the patient's eye goes through the pupil gets onto the retina and it gets reflected back and that is again passed through this reflecting mirror that is why this reflecting mirror is not fully reflecting it is semi reflecting so that it is transparent as well and that uh, lets the light passes through the mirror and reaches into your eye or the examiner's eye so this is how a retinoscope is arranged and this is how the parts of the retinoscope is arranged in such a way that you'll be able to get a proper refraction so we are ending this presentation here and in in future presentation i'll be coming up with uh, more videos on uh, objective refraction and later with subjective refraction